Hey guys, Jordan coming to you here again, back from the storage review Edge Lab. Today on the bench, we've got the Dell XR7620. We just posted our full review on this guy, so make sure you check it out, but we've got more to come on this. Today, just a fun video for you. I was looking at the power consumption of this guy and it got me to thinking, this is currently equipped with dual Xeon Gold 6426Y model CPUs. Those are pretty good. There's a lot of cores in there. They're a little on the power hungry side. This thing likes to idle. We're idling right now about 355, 360 watts. We're just on the Ubuntu desktop on the about page. We're gonna use this as the baseline with our kilowatt. Uh, this is a knockoff version. We're just gonna use relative numbers here. Don't take these as absolute, but checking with the iDRAC settings, they're very, very similar, saying the power consumption in the iDRAC versus what I'm seeing on my knockoff kilowatt here, about 350, 360 watt idle. So I got to think and I was like, okay, what's the lowest power possible configuration you could get one of these in that Dell will still ship you? So we went on the configurator, we took a look, with using these CPUs, I don't have any other CPUs, what's the absolute lowest power consumption that we can get idling? We're gonna pull out these NVMe drives, except for one, because that's the one I'm using for my boot drive right now. We're gonna pull out this L4, we're gonna pull out this NIC, we're gonna pull out this LC OCP card, we're gonna pull out one of our CPUs, we're gonna pull out half our DRAM. So we are gonna cut down, we're gonna lose performance, but I'm really curious, what's the lowest possible power consumption draw that I can get on this guy at idle? There's a button release on the top right here. You can press that, the retaining bracket will slide out, giving you unrestricted access to move, remove your securely retained card. That's again, another important feature as far as the ruggedization goes is there's these different brackets to help support everything. They've got padding and little sponge material in here, help keep everything stationary and from moving and breaking off in transit money shot of our wonderful L4. Love these cards. All right, so this is CPU two. So this is gonna be the one that we remove, uh, which means we actually don't have to go any further into this other than trying to get out this other riser three down here, which I think we have to, yeah. Oh, nope, got lucky. You don't have to remove this second riser in order to remove riser three to get this nick out. Riser 3 just pops out. This is a PCI riser. Here you could almost get another L4 in here, I think. If you had the shorter bracket on it and the proper retention on the back. Man, Dell, think about that. You could almost get a fifth one of these guys in here. So me being the lazy optimist realized that there's this plastic bracket that's in here that's being held in by this riser. So we are gonna have to go ahead and remove that as well. But I think since there's really not a lot of weight, I actually just flip that like that. It's really not putting much pressure on any of those cables. Ah, oh, random baffle screw. And then you just grab these four clips around the edge, pull them in, and read out. You've done this correctly. The whole CPU will come out with the retention bracket. So we're gonna leave ours on here. One really cool thing I just noticed as I was taking this out, they have the memory population for the DIM order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the slot number is on here so you get your DIMs in the right channels. Super awesome. There's our SK Hynix DDR5. These are 4,800 rated, a little slow, but uh, job done. And normally you put these slot blanks back in, but I don't have any extras and I didn't ask for any since this is mostly for a test and not for a production use case. So we're just gonna skip those on this round. All right, so to quickly summarize what we've done, we've disassembled that Dell XR, we pulled out one CPU, we pulled out the DRAM associated with it, we're down to just CPU number one, and we pulled out our L4, we pulled out, there was some extra networking cards, there was one on a riser, and there was one in the OCP slot, we pulled all that stuff out. We're gonna see what we can get the idle power down to on this guy and how low we can go, and we're like I said, we're gonna stick with just the internal boss drives, we are booting off a single of these NVMEs, so we will be leaving just one in here. But this should be the absolute bare minimum configuration without dipping into single channel memory or going down to only dual channel on this side, staying on the four channel.
One thing we didn't really address previously in any of the reviews is this bracket, which goes right here. We've since actually long lost these screws. Sorry, Manya. Um, we've lost the screws just to make it easier, but this is just one more little security thing. If this thing's in a rack and there's another server on top of it, like you're gonna be spending a significant amount of time to remove this pretty thick steel, if you even could in order to access the drives. So it's just one more layer of security. Actually, I think it fits, there we go. It fits just like that. So yes, yeah, so you get a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. Really helps protect this thing and lock it down. You aren't getting in there without some serious effort if this thing's in a rack, especially if the front's on and that's locked. So just one more aspect to the security side of this edge server. All right, so let's get it plugged in and fire it up and see what we do. So this will auto power on. We've got our light on. So let's take a look at our kilowatt and uh, watch that for some numbers. All right, so we got all of our extra hardware removed that we don't need. The fans are up a little bit high right now, but uh, we're pulling down only 216 watts on our idle. We're not doing anything. We're just sitting in the bio screen. All right, so the project's complete. We got everything removed from our Dell XR7620 to get the power draw as low as possible. Going over again what we removed, we got the L4 out, the OCP NIC, four sticks of DRAM, one of the CPUs, and this extra NIC that was on the riser card. And we've got a little bit of open space in here. I ended up going ahead and removing all of the NVMe U.2 drives and sticking with just the BOSS drives internal. And here we are, we're on our Ubuntu About page. You can see we've got half the RAM, half the CPU cores, of course, we removed all that and our idle is all the way down to 159, 160 watts. We're at about half from where we started. That's pretty impressive. All these components just sitting in there doing nothing, taking up a lot of power. Now, if you need them, that's one thing, but to get something that's as low as power as possible in this compact of a platform, 160 watt idle is not bad for the amount of power that you still have in this guy. Thanks for hanging out here in the Edge Lab. Make sure you get subscribed, hit that like button, and stay tuned for more wacky antics here in the Edge Lab.